Hi, my name is Allie, and this is the 2023 Arclight Student Film Festival Preview Show. This year, we have accepted 18 films to screen at our festival. These films come from all over the globe. We have films from Turkey, Iran, Spain, Croatia, South Korea, Canada, and Poland, plus films from all over the United States, including Maryland, New York, Michigan, California, and locally as well from Hersey, Prospect, and Prairie Ridge. Unfortunately, we had so many entries and we couldn't accept them all. So much talent is out there. On this show, we will give you a sneak peek at the film screening this year. Ready? Watch this. How could you say no? Anissa doesn't even find me because of her religion as Ruma. She's from Afghan. Huh. So you're one of those. It's like uh, her other classmates do. I have no issue with this um, because Elodie's always been very quiet since she was very young. Still, while there were more than 2 million homeless in the United States in 1933, homelessness had virtually disappeared by the 1970s. So, what is your favorite color? My favorite color is pink. Pink? Me too! Many people believe that street chess players primarily hustle for money. But as I've shadowed them in their craft these past few months, I've started to realize that it's much more than that. Here you go, is this what you're looking for? Perfect, thank you. This is not what we talked about. That's not fair! I have other assets! You can do anything else but those two and you! You won't back alone, you drove Maria into bankruptcy! Oh, How really? far are you willing to go, Don't Chris? bring Maria into no. this! She knew what she was getting into and she made that deal. That's on her, not any of us! Exactly. So she didn't say anything, she just held his hand. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, uh, exactly. And I feel like I'm gonna throw up. Oh my god, no, I don't want you to throw up. Are you okay? No, no, in a good way. Like butterflies. As you can see, there are some amazing films this year, and the competition is steep. The judges are wrapping up their critiques. There will be awards for Best Foreign Film, Best Animated Film, Best Documentary, and Best Narrative Film. We will also reward the Best in Show, which is the film in any category the judges gave the highest ratings to. 
We will also award films in several categories as well, including Best Screenplay, Best Cinematographer, Best Editing, Best Sound Design, and Best Director. So join me on Saturday night, April 29th at 7 p.m. Central for some of the best student-produced films in the world. The festival will stream on live YouTube. Go to arclightfilmfest.org for more information. There, you will be able to download a program and score sheet so you too can judge the films. Let us know which one you thought was the best. See you on Saturday. Thanks for watching.
Hi, my name is Allie, and this is the 2023 ArcLight Student Film Festival Preview Show. This year, we have accepted 18 films to screen at our festival. These films come from all over the globe. We have films from Turkey, Iran, Spain, Croatia, South Korea, Canada, and Poland, plus films from all over the United States including Maryland, New York, Michigan, California, and locally as well from Hersey, Prospect, and Prairie Ridge. Unfortunately, we had so many entries and we couldn't accept them all. So much talent is out there. On this show, we will give you a sneak peek at the film screening this year. Ready? Watch this. How could you say no? Anissa doesn't even find me because of her religion, Ajuma. She's from Afghan. Oh, you're one of those. It's like uh, her other classmates do. I have no issue with this um, because Elodie's always been very quiet since she was very young. Still, while there were more than 2 million homeless in the United States in 1933, homelessness had virtually disappeared by the 1970s. Um, so, what is your favorite color? My favorite color is pink. Pink? Me too! Many people believe that street chess players primarily hustle for money. But as I've shadowed them in their craft these past few months, I've started to realize that it's much more than that. Here you go, is this what you're looking for? Perfect, thank you. This is not what we talked about. That's not fair! I have other assets! You can do anything else but those two and you! You won't back alone, you drove Maria into bankruptcy! Oh, How really? far are you willing to go, Don't Chris? bring Maria into this! She knew what she was getting into and she made that deal. That's on her, not any of us! Exactly. So she didn't say anything, she just held his hand. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Uh, exactly. And I feel like I'm gonna throw up. Oh my god, no, I don't want you to throw up. Are you okay? No, no, in a good way. Like butterflies. As you can see, there are some amazing films this year, and the competition is steep. The judges are wrapping up their critiques. There will be awards for Best Foreign Film, Best Animated Film, Best Documentary, and Best Narrative Film. We will also reward the Best in Show, which is the film in any category the judges gave the highest ratings to. 
We will also award films in several categories as well, including Best Screenplay, Best Cinematographer, Best Editing, Best Sound Design, and Best Director. So join me on Saturday night, April 29th at 7 p.m. Central for some of the best student-produced films in the world. The festival will stream on live YouTube. Go to arclightfilmfest.org for more information. There, you will be able to download a program and score sheet so you too can judge the films. Let us know which one you thought was the best. See you on Saturday. Thanks for watching.
Hi, my name is Allie, and this is the 2023 Arclight Student Film Festival Preview Show. This year, we have accepted 18 films to screen at our festival. These films come from all over the globe. We have films from Turkey, Iran, Spain, Croatia, South Korea, Canada, and Poland, plus films from all over the United States, including Maryland, New York, Michigan, California, and locally as well from Hersey, Prospect, and Prairie Ridge. Unfortunately, we had so many entries and we couldn't accept them all. So much talent is out there. On this show, we will give you a sneak peek at the film screening this year. Ready? Watch this. doesn't even find me because of her religion as Ruma. She's from Afghan. Huh. So you're one of those. It's like uh, her other classmates do. I have no issue with this um, because Elodie's always been very quiet since she was very young. Still, while there were more than 2 million homeless in the United States in 1933, homelessness had virtually disappeared by the 1970s. So, what is your favorite color? My favorite color is pink. Pink? Me too! Many people believe that street chess players primarily hustle for money. But as I've shadowed them in their craft these past few months, I've started to realize that it's much more than that. Here you go, is this what you're looking for? Perfect, thank you. This is not what we talked about. That's not fair! I have other assets. You can do anything else but those two and you! You won't back alone, you drove Maria into bankruptcy! Oh, How really? far are you willing to go, Don't Chris? bring Maria into no. this! She knew what she was getting into when she made that deal. That's on her, not any of us! Exactly. So she didn't say anything, she just held his hand. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, uh, exactly. And I feel like I'm gonna throw up. Oh my god, no, I don't want you to throw up. Are you okay? No, no, in a good way. Like butterflies. As you can see, there are some amazing films this year, and the competition is steep. The judges are wrapping up their critiques. There will be awards for Best Foreign Film, Best Animated Film, Best Documentary, and Best Narrative Film. We will also reward the Best in Show, which is the film in any category the judges gave the highest ratings to. 
We will also award films in several categories as well, including Best Screenplay, Best Cinematographer, Best Editing, Best Sound Design, and Best Director. So join me on Saturday night, April 29th at 7 p.m. Central for some of the best student-produced films in the world. The festival will stream on live YouTube. Go to arclightfilmfest.org for more information. There, you will be able to download a program and score sheet so you too can judge the films. Let us know which one you thought was the best. See you on Saturday. Thanks for watching. Ballots have been collected. The judges have had their final word. This is the 2023 Arc Light Student Film Festival, hosted by the Academic Resource Center at John Hersey High School. I am Ali Sager. Welcome. This year, we have received many amazing films from all over the world. We accepted films in any category, with the only real criteria being that the films were under 10 minutes long and produced by high school age students. One thing is for sure. There's a lot of talent out there. Thank you to all who had submitted a film. The quality of films was really high and we had to make some tough decisions. And if you had a film that was not accepted, please submit another film next year. Before we go on to the main selections at this year's festival, Mr. Janu, the festival director and sponsor of the JHHS Film Club, will talk about how the films were judged. Thank you, Allie. One of the things about the film festival that I really enjoy is working with a great set of judges. All films have been uploaded to Film Freeway, and there the judges watch the films, and they use this criteria, this rubric, to judge each film. So the films are judged on originality, direction, writing, cinematography, performances, production value, pacing, editing, structure, sound, music, and so forth. And the judges make comments, and then there's an aggregate score. And from that score, we um, average them among the uh, four judges that we have. And we are lucky to have some of the best in the industry here. And um, I can't say enough about this judge. He, he no longer lives in Illinois. He's out in California. This is John Bottolari, otherwise known as Jay Bones. He taught film for many years at Elk Grove High School. He writes for uh, fthismovie.com. They have a weekly podcast that uh, he often appears on, and um, he is just great. He brings this kind of you know, history and passion to this festival. Um, so you can follow him at JBFThisMovie on Twitter if you so desire. 
We also have Eric Anderson, who runs Cornbread Films, a production company here in Chicago, and we've been lucky enough to have him from the beginning when I did a, a film festival at another school, the Cine Student Film Festival. He's been uh, with us since then. He is a screenwriter, a graphic designer. He knows his stuff. He's got a couple of um, couple of productions right now, um, Oriole Park, other plans, and I don't know if you saw it, um, his, his, his wife, Amelia, uh, made Love Under Fire, a documentary about uh, Bertha and Potter Palmer. Um, it was on PBS. So Eric comes here with an expertise as well. And new to the festival this year is Jordan Graves, who is the co-founder of Talus Films out in Chicago and a former student of mine. Yeah, and uh, he has you know, made his life a life of film. And so he joined us this year to, you know, critique these films and adds, you know, a bit of expertise to the uh, film judging. And then we just got a normal, regular guy. He's tallish, though. His name is Mark Heinz. I taught with him for years. He teaches social studies over at Elk Grove High School. But he is a movie lover a movie lover, and so he adds, you know, that kind of element to the film judging process, and I have to say, he's a tough cookie, probably one of the toughest judges that we have, but we're thankful to have him here, and so once they finished, you know, judging, then the tabulations occurred, and we are going to watch these films and um, see how the judges viewed the films. So we're going to um, bring Ellie back up so that we can get the show on the road. Ellie? Thank you, Mr. Janu. Without further ado, let's watch some movies. Tonight we have 18 films in our program. And speaking of programs, Go to arclightfilmfest.org to download our program and voting card. Play along with the play along and judge these films as well. And then see if you match to our judges. The films run about 90 minutes. After the screening, we will announce the winners. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this selection of films of the 2023 Arclight Film Festival. And that store owner seemed like she really wanted that necklace off her hands. Yeah, I mean, I don't know why anyone would want to give it away. It's beautiful. Yeah, and it's perfect for you. The lady seemed kind of crazy, though. Did you hear talking to your husband about hearing voices? That's crazy. Is there something wrong? No, no, nothing. I I'm just paranoid. About what? Forget about it, stupid stuff. <laughs> Yeah, 
god. Very. Are you okay? Man, seriously, is something wrong? It's this necklace. I think it's haunted. Nance, come on, you're seriously not gonna scare me. Skaden, I need you to believe me. I think something is wrong. You gotta be kidding me. You don't think I'm asking to believe you, do you? Why don't you wear it? See what happens then. See? Nothing happened. You're ridiculous. I gotta go. And you gave me the wrong necklace, too! Bon dia. Us he de comunicar una mala notícia sobre la Clara. Mireu el que heu posat al grup de classe. Em dic Clara Mundru. Porto tres anys patint bullying a l'escola. Els meus companys se'm molesten, em diuen coses lletges i ningú em depèn, no tinc amics. A casa les coses tampoc són molt bones. I he arribat al punt de pensar que no vull seguir més. Aquesta va pel Sergi, per ficar-se amb mi. Aquesta va pel Màrian, per empotxar-me les escales. Va ser de cop. Ningú s'esperava, aquesta reacció. És que era una noia molt feliç, que ningú s'ho hauria imaginat, això. Se la veia alegre. I tenia tants amics. No es portava mai per casa. Però això deu ser perquè es devia avergonyir de nosaltres. No volia que ens veiessin. Feia temps que ja no parlàvem tant. La notava una mica distant i estava estranya. No sé com ens ha pogut fer això. No és veritat. Nosaltres no li vam fer res mai. S'ho ha inventat tot. Jo mai la vaig tocar ni insultar. Puede ser, però tampoc tant de parar suïcidar-se.
Todos sabíamos el que pasaba, pero tenían por de dir-ho. Y sí, la Clara rabia a vos. Le lanzaban cosas, le pagaban, en general, bullying. Pero no, Matías, aquí hay un ejemplo. La misma fórmula. Nena, menys tú. Això és un problema molt greu i molt invisibilitzat realment. Aquí en el nostre institut avui està la clara, però l'assetjament escolar no entén de noms. Tots hem d'evitar aquest mal. Famílies, alumnes, docents, institucions, tots hi estem presents. No val apartar la mirada i fer veure que no va amb nosaltres. En la majoria de les vegades no hi ha evidències i quan les trobem ja és massa tard. Espero que a poc a poc podem trobar la conscienciació necessària per evitar aquest mal i rebre les ajudes, el suport necessari per canviar la situació. Moltes gràcies. Ja pot marxar. Thank you.
출입문 닫겠습니다. 출입문 닫겠습니다. 하이 걸스. 유어 하이스쿨 스튜던트. 라이트? 헬로. 어. 유 머스 비 헝그리. 히어. 아이 하브 썸 프라이드 치킨. 트라이 썸. I think I'll pass. I'm not hungry. What? How could you say no? Anissa doesn't even find me because of her religion, as Rima. She's from Afghan. Huh. So you're one of those. When you're a beggar in someone else's country, you take what you get. being nice to the poor girl. Obviously, she's been starving in Afghanistan. She probably doesn't have parents. Immigrants live with other immigrants in tin rooted houses. Dear passengers, the Seoul Metro would like to remind you that possessing threatening religious items, such as hijabs, warrants you for a random search by the police. If you see suspicious personnel in the station or on the subway, Please tell a police officer or a Seoul Metro employee. Let's just go to the next car. Huh. I knew it! You are embarrassed, aren't you? Run away! Run away! I think that Muslim girl is giving me COVID. <laughs> I, I thought I just had a cold, but that Muslim girl is going around spreading COVID to innocent people like me. Anissa is from Afghanistan. COVID is from China. You're talking about the Mars. The disease from the camels. What? <laughs> but MERS through COVID, they're still the same virus, and she's spreading it. We're all gonna die. We're all gonna die. Ladies and gentlemen, world's best mask here. FDA approved. FDA approved. If you want to live, please buy these miracle masks. Buy two. Get one for free. For only 5,000 won. Come on, get some. Buy two, get one for free. Hey, 
Why do you treat me like a virus? I don't have any disease. I'm not from the desert. I've never been to one in my entire life. Wait, I thought you were born and raised in the desert. And you came here for a good education. Are you kidding me right now, Sister Jen? We've been friends for over four years. I've told you over and over, I've never been to a desert, and I came to Korea as a refugee from the war. What war? To be honest, I thought war is a foreign thing anymore. I thought the Korean war was a lot for Let's just stop talking about this. I don't want to talk about complicated things. I'm just an ordinary person. I'm tired of this. Can you spare some change, please? Can you spare some change, please? Hello, sir. Are you alright? I don't have any money. I haven't eaten anything for days. You filthy parasite. I'm not a parasite. But yes, I'm a refugee, so I understand your position, sir. I just wanted to help you because in Afghanistan, my home country, there are a lot of people who are suffering like you. How dare you sympathize with me? I lost my house and family because of thieving parasites like you. Why should my government a scum like you when I'm starving to death. They even brought you on a plane. The government should be paying me free plane tickets. You steal everything that I deserve. You take and take but never give anything back. I am not a parasite. Do you know not everyone can become a refugee? You have to help Korea to qualify. My dad could only escape because he worked at the Korean embassy in Afghanistan and the Taliban would kill him if he stayed. Now he's here. My dad would love to work, but he still can't get a job because you people refuse to give him any. How are we supposed to live? So what, kid? I don't care if you live or die. Go back to your country! Honestly, I don't understand why you try so hard to stand out when you already stand out. What do you mean, Sujin? Sujin, I'm too tired for this. I'm tired too. I'm tired of being wrapped up in your business. I think it's really a time for you to start behaving normally and not make it so obvious that you're a refugee. But I am a refugee. I mean, you could at least try to get used to Korean society. You can do it if you really try. That homeless guy was a bit harsh. Sure, but not completely wrong. And I don't understand why you have to fight and get angry all the time at everything when you can just smile. Smile, Anissa. Smile. If you smile, people won't be scared of you. We are arriving at Incheon Airport. This Terminal is my stop. Incheon Airport Terminal 2. The exit door is on your right. Thank you for riding with us. We hope you have a wonderful day. Honey, I don't want you to get cold, okay? Yes. 
So, what brings you here? I, you must have heard it from the school counselor already. I would like to hear it from both of you. It helps me determine the treatments to go forward with. Uh, I don't think that's going to be necessary. Although, uh, the counselor did mention that Elodie has been quiet, um, and she hasn't been participating in group projects like uh, her other classmates do. I have no issue with this, um, because Elodie's always been very quiet since she was very young. Uh, but they're um, afraid for her well-being. And now we're obliged to see a psychiatrist. So here we are. <laughs> Don't worry, it's uh, just a mental health checkup as we confirmed before. Just imagine this session as simple conversation with friend. Mm. Tell me about your life. My life. Very bland. My whole happiness is Elodie. After I got married, I sort of sacrificed my career for motherhood. Elodie's father works in a consumer products company. Um, he isn't around often, but he's a great father. Oh, that sounds nice. And do you have any, any suspicious about nature of Elodie's shy nature? No. No, um, of course not. Uh, she's always been very quiet, as I said. I just attributed it to her personality. Of course, I would have no issue with that. Mm. Were there any changes in her life when she was younger? Um, I had a hard time being a, a stay-at-home mom. Mm. But we managed somehow. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I fell off my bike. Uh, I'm really clumsy. Uh, I didn't learn how to ride a bike until I was much older. Oh, sorry about that. I hope you get well soon. Uh, thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, do you mind if I get some more water? Of course. Uh, Head right after the corner, there is the kitchen. Great, thanks. Honey, bathe, okay? Please, please, 
Just, I don't want you to see you anymore. وضعیتی که داری مطمئنی میتونه ادامه بدی باری کرده محلیم آلیه ببین به من گوش بده تمام تمرکزت رو بذار تو زمین مسابقه به این فکر کن که اگه بتونی ببری قهرمان بشی میری تیم ملی دختر تیم ملی باری کرده مرابی یا با اومده با شما کار داریم چی؟ این دام گرس پدراسیون اومده دور بیم زفرم گرفتم مشکلش کنیم مسئول ایزه چیه؟ من هم چطور؟ شما نمیدونید اینجا فیلم برداری ماشاءالله دختر خوب گوش بده ببین چی میگم حریفت تو موهی زدن خیلی قویه همین تو تو زیری تو بچ کار کنی فقط با نیدل به زر بزن ببینم چی کار میکنی دختر ماشاءالله یکی
Welcome to Bethesda. In this Maryland suburb, a third of homes cost over a million dollars. Its high schools are ranked in the state's top 15, and its downtown is famous for its amenities. There are many suburbs like Bethesda across America. A brief history of federal housing policy, which got its start in the New Deal, is essential to understanding our current housing landscape. In 1934, the Federal Housing Administration was created to insure home mortgages, introducing low down payment loans. In 1937, a public housing system was established. In 1938, the National Mortgage Association made low-cost loans available by purchasing and securitizing mortgages. In 1956, the federal government authorized the construction of 41,000 miles of road leading to the proliferation of suburbs. Now, it appears that federal housing policy has at least been successful in increasing home ownership, which rose from 44 to 67 percent between 1940 and 2000. There certainly is a thriving mortgage market supported by the federal government. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac have done a good job of making it relatively you know, easy if you have uh, these savings, we have a decent credit score, to access a 30-year mortgage. The goal is to make housing more affordable and, in, and to increase home ownership. Uh, these, these programs have not been a success. Look at, the, uh, uh, look at Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. They've made it possible for people to get loans that are far, in ex far outsized relative to their income. They've allowed people to get mortgages with very little or even no down payment. And that's a big part of the reason why you continue to see prices of housing outpace inflation. And if you look at the home ownership rates, home ownership rates now versus back in, say, the 1960s, before we had such heavy government subsidization, home ownership rates have been pretty much steady over the years. Still, while there were more than 2 million homeless in the United States in 1933, Homelessness had virtually disappeared by the 1970s, so at least the national public housing system was a success, wasn't it? The public housing debacle, just a few decades ago, you had the government, federal government subsidizing the building of these monstrosities, these public housing projects that became dilapidated, that became riddled with crime, that really oftentimes did not leave their residents in a better situation than they were in prior. In fact, with homelessness topping a million in the early 1990s, the federal government was first to declare an affordable housing crisis. Incredibly, over half of poor households pay more than 50% of their income for rent and utilities, leaving precious little for food, clothing, health care, and other necessities. And the failure of incomes to keep pace with housing costs over the past two decades has put home ownership beyond the reach of many young middle-class families. So, while federal housing policy didn't actually make housing more affordable, at least it did a great job building the American suburbs, right? The federal government did a great job of successfully and intentionally discriminating against people of color in house, particularly through redlining, um, through displacement. Uh, the federal government, in the early to middle part of this, of the 20th century, uh, established programs that were designed to help expand access to affordable housing, but did that in ways that in some cases were explicitly uh, designed to exclude African Americans or others who were considered undesirable. We see the effect of federal housing policy on people of color by comparing Bethesda to Silver Spring. In Bethesda, less than 14% of residents are Black or Hispanic, but it is more than 44% in Silver Spring. In Silver Spring, less than 2% of homes cost over a million dollars. Its high schools have an average state rank of 62, and its downtown is famous for its crime. Given that we find the same disparity between neighboring communities across America, how did this happen? But FHA limited its loans to neighborhoods that were deemed good investments, neighborhoods with white non-immigrant residents. From 1934 to 1968, FHA helped finance more than $120 billion worth of loans. 98% of that went to white borrowers. 
We put Americans to work building the interstate highway system, the end, but federal highways cut right through black and minority neighborhoods. Even though the Fair Housing Act of 1968 prohibited discrimination in the financing of housing, the loss in intergenerational wealth from hysterical discrimination in the federal government's stance that land use is a local issue has allowed local governments to keep affordable housing out of wealthier, white neighborhoods using zoning laws. If there is a zoning law where a family cannot move into a home unless they can afford a single family home, they are concentrated into what people may call a uh, quote unquote ghetto or the hood, which then limits them and traps them. So, while the federal government helped increase home ownership rates and reduce homelessness, it also raised the cost of housing, replaced shanty towns with vertical slums, and segregated America, all with a white picket fence. Over there, and it's a one and boost that. Are you zooming it? Hello, I know it's Jericho. That's me. My full name. Okay. Uh, about a bit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Lupita. What is your favorite color? My favorite color is pink. Pink? Me too. If you could have a superpower, what would you want it to be? Uh, my favorite is just a. Uh, what do you want to be when you're older? Uh, astronaut. You're going to be an astronaut? Yeah. What language do you like speaking better, English or Spanish? I'm going to be two because it's my favorite. Them both? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think they're both good languages. Pues me gustaría explicarles que el síndrome de Down no es una enfermedad. Eh, el síndrome de Down es una condición de vida. Uh, me refiero a condición de vida uh, que dependiendo de las necesidades de cada uno se adaptan para por ellos mismos salir adelante. No es una enfermedad porque ese tipo de ayuda, de adaptación, es lo que los hace... Uh, Diferente se podría decir con un niño típico, regular, pero ellos pueden salir adelante. No es como me refiero, me gustaría mucho dejar en claro que no es una enfermedad, porque ellos pueden salir adelante con mucho apoyo, con adaptaciones y uh, no hay límites para ellos. Ay, como 
mamá de Lupita, pues ha sido un camino de aprendizaje. Uh, aprendizaje desde que ella nació. Ella nació, nació a las 27 semanas, muy chiquita. Entonces, uh, digo de aprendizaje porque no sabíamos nada. Eh, los doctores daban un diagnóstico malo que no podía... Uh, por lo chiquita que estaba, sus pulmones no estaban bien desarrollados, su vista no nos aseguraba que pudiera ver, uh, su corazón retrocedía sangre, por eso es que tuvieron que hacer la cesárea a las 27 semanas. Y uh, pues todo era negativo con respecto a los doctores, todo era negativo. Mamá de Lupita. Pues de ser mamá de Lupita, mi parte favorita es que nunca me aburro con ella. Siempre tiene historias, cuenta lo que le pasa en el día, todos los días, habla mucho, tiene mucho que decir, tiene mucho que dar, es una niña muy linda, con la no, nunca te aburres con ella. Entonces, mi parte favorita es siempre estar con ella, escucharla y la manera que es, ella es muy linda. I love that Lupita is so funny and she's always in a good mood and she has an amazing personality. She is always respectful and kind and she's always standing up for me. I love Lupita's kind heart and her amazing and interesting stories. She always comes in with a smile. She's such a great kid to be around. Lupita is kind and I absolutely love her voice. She just does. She is so genuine and she's very kind and she loves to learn and that makes it fun for us to teach her because she just wants to absorb everything and she just wants to learn as much as she can and she just makes everyone smile my favorite. i was gonna crush on him too <laughs> but just don't tell anybody Welcome to the diverse world of street chess located in the heart of New York City at Washington Square Park, an iconic destination for tourists, Wall Streeters, and chess enthusiasts alike. Many people believe that street chess players primarily hustle for money, but as I've shadowed them in their craft these past few months, I've started to realize that it's much more than that. I like to play people that are happy and joyful to be here. It's also fun like learning how to entertain people from different parts of the world. And then I make friends too. That's really fun. Like me? Like you. Cheese is a strong chess expert with five life master norms, something that he always emphasizes before we play a match. Outside of chess, he likes to rap, and he recently released a song about the Hans Niemann cheating scandal. Oh. Game of chess! Better education than NYU! No vaccination required! I really want people going, like, I have their best interests at heart, you know what I mean? I'm sorry I have to charge them, but I just don't have a job right now. <laughs> Street chess doesn't stem from money, but rather from affinity for the game. An example of the way people give meaning to and build creative forms of sociality in urban settings, street chess is about interacting with one another and the strangers passing by, forging new friendships and memories every day. At their core, chess hustlers are artists. Though they know that the profession might not be the most lucrative, they still come to immerse themselves in a unique culture, pursuing what they are truly passionate about. Um, the game of chess is a um, game of kings. Godwin is a candidate master, and he's arguably the king of the park. Outside of chess, he works on Wall Street as a loans officer. So at the age of 20, I was the national champion of Nigeria, the youngest national champion ever. Make a move. Make a move. Make a move. And I'm a better man today because of chess. 
there was even the time I played I played chess in the rain. You know, I was like chess in the rain, chess in the rain, chess in the rain. And people stopped and played. That was fun. To bond with these guys doing that in the cold. It was just amazing. We appreciate, you know, every single player we play, whether you you know anything about chess or you're a professional, we appreciate the games. Although some of the stereotypes of street chess are true, such as the fact that most street chess players tend to be African-American, they've been very accepting of me, a Korean-American high schooler. The street chess community transcends age and race and is inclusive to all who love chess and even those who don't. I first met Marty when he gave me his forever legendary line, the chess shop is open. Marty cares about his family deeply and is looking forward to writing a chess opening book for beginners this winter. I love talking. I used to be a counselor, yeah. a therapist, you know. But it was like, a lot of people going through lots of things. The same thing I was going through. Sadness, depression, loneliness, the lack of COVID came over a lot of people. So I came out of the park, played some chess, and I'm meeting lots of people from different backgrounds, different cultures, lots of different people. And, and the one thing that brings everyone, all these different people together is chess. So street chess is, is unique to everybody, to the community, to the people who are playing. It's, 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 it's good for everyone. It's what I call spreading the peanut butter evenly across the bread. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Is there one thing that, um, that you want people to know about street chess? Play it. Come out and play it. It's fun. It may look scary, but it's fun. All right? Yeah. But you gotta come out and play. Let's play up! Street chess has made me reconsider how I think about and understand culture, community, and people. How you can never evaluate a certain community until you've truly embraced the people for who they are. When I first heard stories about the chess hustlers at Washington Square Park when I was younger, I unfairly judged them. But now I've come to appreciate them for pursuing their craft together with joy. That concludes the chess day for Marty Mark. Good night, guys. Do you guys have any um, Colleen Hoover? Is this what you're looking for? Perfect, thank you. So is this a gift? N no. It's for yourself. <laughs> yes, yeah, there's something wrong? No, not at all. I just wanted to assume you're into Colleen Hoover. <laughs> I don't know any guys that like her stuff. Don't stereotype now. I heard she was good. And I appreciate some good literature, so I figured I'd give her a shot. Yeah, she's good. I like her.
Hi, you're the Colleen Hoover guy? <laughs> and you're the Mad Cat Joe Romances girl? I'm... So, nice to meet you. What about right now? You want to go out right now? Yeah, why not? Hypothetically, what if it's fate that brought us together? That's quite a grand subject. The concept of twin flames, parallels, like the universe has some grand plan for every single one of us. It's cool, you know? So? Do you think fake's always a good thing? I don't know. Well, I should probably get going. I like to think that the universe is intertwined. So, follow your heart, and maybe you'll find it. Was I right? What is this? You and I, is this just some bizarre coincidence? Mm. So, I think something needs to change. It's just felt so complacent for a while now. Here, look.
So, that wasn't a dream after all. Dream or no dream, I'm still here. You said to me that you looked towards others to complete you. But Luna, you don't need me to do that. I get it now. I guess the stars are calling me back. Thank you, Sol. Have an appointment. Well, I have a meeting with Mr. Barrel. Oh, Mr. Carson, how nice to see you again. I'll let him know you're here. He has been waiting for you, you know. Mr. Barrow is ready to see you now. I assume you remember the way to the boardroom? I don't think you understand the strategic implications of your proposal. Mr. Carson! I was wondering when you'd show up. Mr. Barrow? I uh, presume you are already aware of what I'm here to discuss? Mr. Carson. James. Can I call you James? Can I call you Gordon? No, I don't like it when you call me that. Can we please just get started? Yes. Let's get this deal done. Look, I've been thinking, and I think there's a better way to resolve this situation. You've had plenty of time to decide. I think we've all been very patient. I'm not going to be rushed into this. You already rushed the front end of this deal. So now you're on his side? Whoa, whoa. Hey, man. I don't have a horse in this race. I'm on my own here. We're all on our own. Can we just get going? Look, if you have something else to offer, Let's talk about it now. I have other assets than the ones you're trying to acquire. They're valuable. For example, I'll offer you- I'm not interested in your other assets. The only thing that's going to move the needle is cash or what we previously discussed. Will, will you back alone? I don't know. I might just have to think about that. I don't usually rush into these kinds of deals. This is not what we talked about. That's not fair. I have other assets. You can do anything else but those two and you. 
You won't back alone. You drove Maria into bankruptcy. Oh, How really? far are you willing to go, Don't Chris? bring Maria into this. She knew what she was getting into when she made that deal. That's on her, not any of us. Exactly. What in the world are you talking about right now? I... Oh. Hello, everyone. I expect this to be wrapped up soon so we can move on to other things. But if you're all going to get angry and act like children, we can just end things right here. Just give me what I need, James. It's nothing personal, it's just business. Has it really come to this? What happened to the dream? What happened to our dream? Does that mean nothing? Let's just get this settled before the bank gets involved. I hoped it wouldn't come to this. You do know that this is going to end me, right? It was a flesh bring business with you. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Chris, it's your turn. Hey guys. Sounds like things are getting a little intense in here. I thought I might bring you some cookies as a peace offering. Thanks, Mom. Hey, Maria, get off your dumb phone and get over here. There's food. <laughs> Forget about our agreement. Remember, this is my game now. Remind me not to make deals with her again. Wait, Rhea, I thought. Oh, shut it, James. You know I always have a plan. I knew it was a word. How do you even know what it is? Oh, wouldn't you like to know? Aquafaba. The viscous water in which seeds such as chickpeas have been cooked. It says that it can be used as a substitute for eggs. Chickpeas? Water. Oh. That's Whatever, I'm going to play the word at. There's no um, way that's a word. At. Um, um, where are you going to be playing that? We're the Aquafaba. A Q U A. Judge me? I have three kids and my trailer just freaking crashed, okay? I just said you let it on taxes or due. It was I last turn. don't want to hear any of it. I have $120,000 in student loans and I'm a plumber. Okay, I don't want to hear it. I have spent $200,000 on trying to save some endangered species. Just spin the dial. Just spin Move the your dial. Car and everything oh, will be okay. Oh, the dial came off. That means I get money again. Oh, no. Oh. Come on. You have one job. You have one job. Yeah, to fix the dial.
yellow? No, I can't. I'm hiking. Apparently it's a great bonding experience for the whole family. Uh, I think I'm lost. Hold on, you're breaking up. Cindy! Hey mom, where are you? I think I'm at the wrong entrance. Okay, I'll come to you. No, I'm excited. I think I have a new appreciation for the woods. I watched this movie last night, and this girl, she liked this guy, but she didn't know how to tell him because they're friends, but she wanted to be more than friends, so she didn't say anything, she just held his hand. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, uh, exactly, 
and I feel like I'm gonna throw up. Oh my god, no, I don't want you to throw up. Are you okay? No, no, in a good way. Like butterflies. <sighs> you know, it's so cold out this time of year. I know you've been busy with your friend, but I miss this. Hmm. I hope I'm not getting replaced anytime no, soon. No, you're not getting replaced. Hmm. Hmm. Well, maybe I should just meet this friend. What's her name? Katie? Uh, no, uh, Kate actually. And she's not just a friend. Hmm. Oh, so you mean like best friends? We're just really close. When I feel the beat of my heart Getting swallowed up by the dark Well, I'm moving a little closer Get a little closer to you Know you hear a lot of requests Could you help me out of this mess? Well, I'm moving Who are you texting? No one. Just my parents. Have you told them yet? They will. I promise. They say the night is at its darkest Just before the break of day When I can't see the light I hope it's the truth Cause if it's a lie my heart will surely break All I know is I once was lost Now I'm finding Little pieces of bread Around every bend The trail takes me places I don't wanna go But I follow in Mom? They say the night is at its darkest Just before the break of day When I can't see the light I hope it's the truth 
as if it's a lie.
Wasn't that great? We just watched 18 films from all over the world. Before we announce the winners, we want to thank all of our filmmakers tonight. Competition was steep, and it is not too late to start planning for making a film for next year. Please go to our website to sign up for updates. The festival will take place in April of 2024. Now for the judges awards. All films were watched and judged based on specific criteria, and the ballots were tallied. Mr. Janu, let's have the envelopes. There you go. For Best in Sound, nominees include Stay Awake, The Mirror of Her, Fence, and The Hole. And the award goes to The Hole, directed by Pieta Kazmierczyk. For Best Screenplay, nominees include The Mirror of Her, Plant Psychic, Game Plan, and Only If I Could Talk. And the award goes to If Only If I Could Talk, directed by Daphne Say. In Best Editing, nominees include The Hole, Fence, Street Chess Community, and White Picket Fence. And the award goes to The Hole, directed by Piet Kazmierczyk. In Best Cinematography, nominees include The Subway, Street Chase Community, Fence, and The Adventures of a Snail. And the award goes to The Adventures of a Snail, directed by Patrick Simunovic. In Best Director, nominees include Street Chess Community, The Mirror of Her, Only If I Could Talk, and The Hole. And the award goes to the Hole, directed by Piet Kazmierczyk. For Best Foreign Film, the award goes to Only If I Could Talk, directed by Daphne Say. Judges' quotes include beautifully acted and artfully told. Well done. In Best Animated Film, the award goes to The Hole, directed by Piet Kazmierczyk. Quotes from judges include extremely creative and very compelling visual language used. Beautifully done. Wow. In Best Documentary, the award goes to Street Chess Community, directed by Eugene Yu. Quotes from judges include fascinating look into something I knew nothing about. Shots framed beautifully, wonderful editing rhythms. This did exactly what a short documentary is supposed to do. Give the viewer an intro and insight into a world they may not be familiar with. Entertaining from the first second to the last, and I'll bet there's a feature-length story to be found here. In a Best Narrative Film, the award goes to The Mirror of Her, directed by David Lillian. Quotes from the judges include, I loved the inherent sweetness of this and the empathetic point of view. Love, love, loved the musical number. Performances were uniformly terrific. The story starts out feeling somewhat familiar, but takes an artistic and unexpected turn that elevates it into something else. Lovely. And finally, for best in show, the award goes to... The Hole, directed by Piet Kazmierczyk. Quotes from the judge include, This is a work of genius, and this filmmaker is a rare talent. If he can do this at 16, I can't wait to see what he does as his talents continue to develop and grow. This is the kind of film you hope to find at a festival. Yay! Wonderful work, everyone. Again, thank you to all filmmakers. Your hard work and dedication to the craft is what this is all about. Winners, you will be receiving your award certificate soon in the mail. Thanks again, everyone. That wraps up our festival. Thank you for watching. If you want to submit to the festival next year, please visit our website at arclightfilmfest.org. See you next year. There we go, nicely done.